Hey guys, what's up? It's Wayviver. Today we're diving back into Digital Combat Simulator to try out the upcoming FA-18C Hornet. This video is all thanks to the team behind Digital Combat Simulator, which gave me the early access to a preview build of the FA-18C Hornet module. The module is an upcoming aircraft for the Digital Combat Simulator created by Belsentech. And in this video, we're gonna learn the basics by going through a cold start tutorial and advance to the takeoff, short flight, and a first VFR landing. I'm gonna use my Samsung Odyssey Windows Mixed Reality headset together with the Trustmaster T16000M flight pack and my next level flight stand. I hope you're gonna enjoy it. Join me now. Welcome to this training lesson on starting up the Hornet. In some missions, you will find yourself in a cold and dark Hornet that you will need to bring to life. While this can be a rather long process as described in the manual, you can also enable the auto start function. However, for this lesson, we'll review the full startup procedure. Press spacebar when you are ready to get started. All right, guys, we're sitting in the FA-18 Hornet. I'm so excited to just start off this aircraft. But I haven't learned the checklists yet for the cold start and the takeoff. So I'm going to go through a short tutorial, hopefully a short tutorial, where I learn how to do that. Wow, this looks so nice. I'm running it on the Samsung Odyssey with super sampling of 1.8 in the game. And it's so sharp. And also I can use the zoom, of course, to come closer. This is something that I didn't know about in my last Digital Combat Simulator video. So it's so much easier to just move around in VR while zooming in, in with the one button. Also, I'm using the mouse and I can interact with everything with the mouse. I am not gonna use a VR controller because I'm using a flight stand here. It, it would be just too much of a hassle. So I'm gonna use the mouse. And if I double click on the scroll bar on the mouse, I can actually move forward and backward so it's much easier to reach those panels back here, for example, the APU, for example, that we're gonna switch on in a second. And uh, yes, I'm gonna just come a little bit closer maybe, or well, something like that, I guess. So let's start off the tutorial, come on. The first thing we need to do is enable the two batteries. This will allow operation of the canopy and power the engine igniters. You'll also notice that the integrated fuel and engine indicator or IFI, in the lower left portion of the instrument panel will have power. There it is. Move the battery switch to the up or on position with a right mouse button click. All right, let's go. The Hornet has two fire detection circuits, A and B, that test for fire in the engines, auxiliary power unit, and bleed air system. Before we go into detail on that though, check that the hydraulic brake pressure gauge for the wheel brakes shows at least 3000 PSI. Confirm this by looking at the gauge, which is located to the left and up from the highlighted fire test switch. Okay, now put the spring-loaded fire test switch in the up test A position and keep holding it up to test the A circuits. That's right. To do this, Engine place the mouse over left. the fire test switch Engine and hold down left. the right mouse button. Engine Keep holding right. the mouse button down Engine and do not release right. it until it runs through all APU the fire test fire. audio warnings. APU In addition fire. to the audio warnings, Leader also note left. the fire test warning Leader lights Leader on the left. upper left and right portions Leader of the instrument right. panel. Right. When it's done, press spacebar. <laughs> all right, so I think we're done here. We will now do the same thing for the B circuit. After waiting 10 seconds, place the mouse over the fire test switch and hold down the left mouse button to move the switch in the down test B position. Keep holding it down Engine and then release left. it once all the fire Engine warning fire audio left. messages have been played. Engine fire right. Well done. Engine Press space fire bar. Right. Wow, Engine every, fire. everything is so Engine detailed fire. and everything is so sharp. It's so easy to read everything, but also of course the zoom is helping out a lot, especially while trying to interact with all the knobs and buttons and gauges. Wow, this looks awesome. Good job. Note that in the top left portion of the IFI, you can see the RPM and temp of both the left and right engines. These will be important for when we start the engines. We will now turn on the auxiliary power unit, or APU. This is a small, self-contained engine that augments the bleed air system and will start turning the engines for engine starts. 
Place the APU control switch in the up or on position with a left mouse button click. Once the green light next to the APU switch comes on, move the engine crank switch to its right position, marked by the R with a right mouse button click. This will allow the APU to power the air turbine starter, or ATS, which in turn allows the aircraft mounted accessory drive, or AMAN, to start turning the fan blades within the right engine. I see, so it's green now, let's turn or crank up the engine, the right engine. Once the right engine RPM has reached 20%, as indicated on the IFE, move the right throttle from off to idle by pressing right shift home. This in turn will introduce fuel into the engine combustion chamber and start the igniters. Once the right engine RPM has reached 60%, the right engine start cycle is complete and the right generator is automatically engaged. Once at 60%, press spacebar. 60%, okay, so we're gonna do the right throttle on idle mode, let's go. I have a button for that actually, there we go. And let's wait until it's 60% of RPM, it's 36, 37, 38. <laughs> Whoa. This feels so powerful, guys. Roll left, roll left. 65? All right. Flight controlled. Let's go. Flight controlled. When we conducted the tests of the A and B fire test circuits, we also closed the bleed air shutoff valves. We need to reopen these by rotating the bleed air knob clockwise 360 degrees from norm to norm. Do this by right mouse button clicking on the outer portion of the knob. When done, press spacebar. All right, so it's on norm already, but we're gonna click it four times, I guess. There we go. And uh, let's continue. With the right engine running and generator power on, place the left and right digital display indicators, or DDIs, to the day position using right mouse button clicks on both brightness selector knobs. Next, rotate the HUD Symbology brightness control knob clockwise by placing your mouse over it and rotating your mouse wheel forward. Once you see video displayed on the left and right DDIs and HUD, Press spacebar. Oh, now it's coming up. The left DDI is on. Let's turn on the right DDI as well. And also the HUD or the heads up display. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to do that. There we go. Oh yes. Heads up display is on. In the lower center of the instrument panel, is the multi-purpose color display, or MPCD. Rotate the power and brightness control knob to the full bright setting by placing your mouse over the knob and rotating your mouse wheel forward. It will take a few moments to power on. Press spacebar once you see video displayed on the MPCD. So let's wait until the MPCD starts off. There we go. All right. On the left DDI, press the menu push button to bring up the support page. The support page has several sub-pages, like the checklist, engine, fuel, ADI, and HSI. For now, though, press the FCS push button to select the flight control system page. Oh, there it is. FCS. The FCS page shows the status of the control surfaces and any detected FCS errors. The X's indicate detected errors, but we will address those once the left engine is started. You should not see any two R or FADEC caution messages along the bottom of the left DDI. Note that by default, you will not have the built-in test or bit page on the right DDI. We'll come back to this. During this lesson and future lessons, you will often see and hear the master caution. This is the large yellow label button on the instrument panel that will light when any caution condition is triggered. Let's push it. There will also be an accompanying deedle deedle sound to draw your attention. Press this button or click on it to acknowledge the caution and extinguish the light. I did so already. Press the master caution again to restack the caution and advisory notices along the bottom of the left DDI. 
precautions will be along the top and advisories in smaller text along the bottom. Around here, I guess. If the left DDI is not on, then the caution and advisories will be displayed on another display. By default, though, they will be on the left DDI. I see. The Hornet comes equipped with an inertial navigation system, or INS. Use right mouse clicks to set the INS switch, located on the sensor panel to the ground position. This will start an INS ground alignment. Oh, there we go. Let's put it on ground then. Now it is time to crank the left engine. Go ahead and move the engine crank switch to its left position. Ah, Let cool. L. Let's go. By left mouse clicking it. Once the left engine is at 20% RPM, as indicated on the IFE, move the left throttle from off to idle by pressing right alt home. Let's do idle then. This will add fuel to the engine and start the igniters. When the left engine is at 60% RPM, press spacebar to continue. Cool. This feels so realistic. It feels so immersive to just sit in here. Wow, they hear the engines? <laughs> ah, this is awesome. I think we're gonna close this thing in a second, the canopy or canopy or whatever it's called. On the FCS page, we have quite a few exits indicating abnormal FCS readings. To clear these, press and hold the FCS reset button. Located in the back of the left console is the panel for the onboard oxygen generation system, or OBOG. Go ahead and set the OBOG switch to its up, on position. To the left of the INS switch is the radar switch. Set this switch to the operate position using your right mouse button. Don't worry, the radar will be in silent mode. You won't microwave the ground crew. There we go. Our next step will be to run a bit on the flight control system, or FCS. Before doing so, set the flaps to the up, auto position with the F key or two right mouse button clicks on the flap switch. Here's the flaps. Two clicks. We'll now run a bit of the flight control system. This moves the control surfaces to their limits to test for any software or mechanical errors. First, select the FCS bit page from the bit page on the right DDI. Am I supposed to click this one? Probably not. To run the FCS bit, We'll need to activate two controls at the same time. Oh. While holding up on the FCS bit switch on the right wall, press the FCS push button on the right DDI. Upon doing so, you'll see the controls being cycled on both the FCS DDI page, and if you look outside the cockpit, you can watch the wing and tail control surfaces moving. Once the FCS bit is complete, marked by the beep tone, Place the flap switch in the center or half position with a left mouse button click on the switch. Takeoff is done with flaps set to half. Once we are airborne, we'll move them to auto. Okay. No beep yet. So I actually had to push the Y button on the keyboard to pu pull, it, pull that little FSC bit knob because it was impossible to push both buttons at the same time. So it's in test right now. I'm not sure. Well, I think we're just going to go into half now. Come on. For takeoff, we will want our stabs trim for 12 degrees. To set this, press and hold down the takeoff trim button. Upon doing so, you will also notice that the stab values on the FCS page will change to 12. The leading edge flaps, trailing edge flaps, and rudder should all have values of 30 degrees. You should also have no X's on the FCS page. Well, there are no X's left, I guess. That's cool. Uncage the backup ADI by placing your mouse over the SAI cage knob and rotating the mouse wheel aft until the red flag is stowed. Close the canopy by holding the canopy control switch in the down, closed position until the canopy is closed. Do this by pressing the key combination or placing the mouse over the switch and holding down the left mouse button. Once the canopy is closed, press spacebar to continue. Oh, cool! Ha <laughs> ha!
Wow, it got so much more quiet now. Awesome. All right. So we made it, I guess. At this point, the INS has been aligned as indicated on the MPCD HSI page. Move the INS switch from ground to nav with one right mouse button click on the switch. There we go. Prior to taxi, press the menu push button on the left DDI to go to the TAC or tactical page. On the TAC page, you have access to sub pages like the stores management system, attack radar, HUD, and electronic warfare pages. I see. Okay. Where should I go then? On the left DDI TAC page, select the HUD push button to display a mirror of the HUD on the DDI. This can be useful when head down or in case of HUD failure. Oh, cool. So that's the same. All right, all right. Let's now set up the right DDI. Press the menu push button on the right DDI to bring up the tactical page. All right. Tactical page, there it is. Isn't this the tactical page? I, I'm not sure which one of these I should go with. Um. Press the menu push button again to bring up the support page. Uh, it feels a little bit buggy, this tutorial, because I'm pushing a lot of times. Now on the support page, press the FCS push button. We will want the HUD on the left DDI and the FCS page on the right DDI when we taxi and take off. Alright. So here are the bits now. Or the FCS is here. And the DDI uh, left should have uh, the... Uh, the parking brake system bits. is operated with the yellow and black parking brake handle. The handle is currently in the park position indicated by the fact that the park label is visible to the pilot. Release the parking brake now by rotating the handle 45 degrees counterclockwise from the extended position. This can be achieved by left mouse button clicking the handle or pressing the right alt P key. This will release the lock and allow the handle to return to the horizontal stowed position where the emerge label is visible to the pilot. All right. This concludes the current lesson on starting up the Hornet. As mentioned earlier though, there is also an option for automatically starting up the Hornet by pressing the left window's home key. You can end the lesson now by pressing the escape key. Well, I'm not gonna escape this lesson, I'm gonna take off guys. <laughs> we have started off the Hornet. So yeah, everything is running I guess and uh, yeah, let's just do full throttle I guess. Oh, let's see how this goes. Oh. Wow, that was some good speed from the start already. Oh man, this is... Whoa, rudders, whoa, whoa, more rudders. Whoa, sorry. <laughs> I'm tr trying to learn this. Okay, let's roll a little bit. Oh yes. Oh man, what a feeling of flying this aircraft. It's so freaking fast. Okay, we need to pull the gears up. There we go. Gears up. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is so cool. Oh, man. I love it already. Wow. I know I should be climbing much more, but I, I just want to do some low altitude flying for a second. Just to get the feeling of this aircraft because I'm totally new into this. Wow, this looks so freaking good also. I gotta add that I got much better performance in this simulator by running it in full screen. Even though it shouldn't matter because I'm running it in VR. Wow, this is so incredible. Okay, let's dive down. I know this is so totally wrong, but we're just gonna dive down. And do some crazy flying around here. I'm having the trees on quite low because I don't want to render too many trees. Oh, <laughs> look at this! The sense of speed is just incredible. Whoa, that was close. And maybe it's not even fair that I actually got access to the FA-18 Hornet before it's even released. Because I'm such a noob and there are so 
much well skilled guys out there that really deserves to fly this aircraft before me but hey I, I, I guess I'm just lucky but I have to note that I actually bought it so I have bought the DLC as well I just got the early access uh, for free for now but when the game or when the DLC is out I will have to use my paid version of it so let's see I'm just gonna try to hold the attitude for a second and I'm gonna try to switch on some of the uh, lights here uh, I think this should be somewhere here um, let's see we have instrument panel oh let's let's go with this one oh look at how sexy this is oh yes I know it's not necessary during daytime but still also there's some more consoles let's try this one oh so now it's illuminated the uh, the text around here on the side panels and well people say that this is actually the most advanced aircraft so far in digital combat simulator and I don't know much about it because well I don't have so much DLCs yet I bought the flaming cliffs I bought the warthog um, A10C I haven't even tried it yet so yeah, I'm a little bit spoiled. I'm actually doing my first ever, well, serious flight with probably the best DLC out there for the Digital Combat Simulator. This is incredible. Altitude. Altitude. How about trying to do a landing? Maybe that's impossible, uh, but I'm gonna try to do that, all right? I'm gonna lower down the throttle just for a little second. And I'm gonna... Try to lower down the speed. Uh, let's see, let's see. How am I even doing the air, air brake? I don't even remember that. <laughs> I'm such a noob in this. Wow, this is so awesome. Hey, you gotta see this from outside. L let me just show you. Wow. <laughs> Here it comes, here it comes. Whoa! <laughs> Man, this aircraft is so sexy. It's just incredible. So, yes, guys, there's so much stuff here. As you can see, there's a hook here that we're gonna use. Probably, I'm gonna try to do a landing on the carrier as well. And here we can, uh, uh, well, kind of the wings as well when we're doing taxi and so and yeah there, there are like so many things to learn on this aircraft I mean you see the panels here it's just like incredible everything is interactable and if you're using Oculus Rift I think you can actually interact with your hands and uh, I'm not sure if that actually works with the Odyssey. I have not tested it because I think feel quite comfortable to use my mouse. I have my new desktop stand on uh, my next level racing and flight stand. So I have a lot of space here for the uh, mouse and the keyboard and everything. Wow. This is just crazy. I really feel like a pilot, you know? <laughs> incredible stuff so I'm gonna do some low altitude flying just for a second I'm gonna try to find that runway again I don't know I, I totally lost it maybe I should switch sw should switch to uh, another panel here I'm gonna try to do that uh, or maybe we should go with this one there we go we have a uh, what is this one nope that's not the one I want Nope, nope, uh, let's see, S-A, what is that, nope. Man, I'm such a noob. Ch here's a checklist, actually, oh, cool. Well, it's a very, very simple checklist, so I, I wouldn't count on it too much. And also, as you can see, everything is flickering a little bit, 
sometimes I get it solved by using the mouse and just like scrolling. It's like that. Look at that. When I'm scrolling with the mouse right now, it's getting more bold and then it's getting more thin. And in VR, you really need to add a little bit more bold so it's not flickering that much. It's very strange actually, and it's actually deactivating the mouse while you're doing so. So let's see, we have actually a marker over there. Hmm, so maybe we can just fly there. Oh, there is a runway, all right! <laughs> oh, I found it. Flying this airplane with my new Thrustmaster T1600M HOTAS joystick with the rudders. Well, I'm not using the rudders much yet, as you can see, but still, it really is awesome. <laughs> oh man, I'm amazed. Seriously, and I thought that X-Plane 11 was cool. This is, this is really something different. And with the Odyssey, it's so sharp. It's ridiculously sharp, actually. So yeah, here's the runway and I'm going to try to align myself. So now I have found the speed brakes, actually it's over here. I'm retracting them. You can probably hear that and then we're going to try to lose some speed here. I'm going to do a 180 degree turn and try to land on that runway over there. Whoa, that was a little bit too much of a brake, I think. We're going to pull it a little bit back. And uh, let's lose some altitude as well. Oh, I think we're getting too low on speed. We're below 200 now. We're exactly at 200. I think we need like 250. There's the runway. Man, this is awesome. If you are into flight simulators and DCS especially, you're gonna love this. So yeah, 184, whoa, that's way too much, okay. I'm gonna remove that master caution button because it's bothering me. So I think we can actually uh, pull down the gears. There we go, gears are down now because we're below 250 knots or miles per hour, I think it is. So I'm thinking I'm gonna leave the uh, carrier take off and landing for my next video instead because I think this video is getting a little bit long now so I'm gonna save that uh, for the next video this weekend so stay tuned to check that out and I'm gonna try to land on a carrier next time and especially take off and land I think it's gonna be very exciting so yeah let's see can we land this thing oh I have way too much of speed right now let's pull the speed brakes there we go <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna make it. Whoa, okay. Let's see, I'm gonna use the rudders a little bit. There we go. Oh man, this is not easy. Oh, come on. Oh man, we need less speed, we need less speed. No, no, I'm way too... Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, I made it. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, and, 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 oh, no, 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 no. Uh, come on. Wheel brakes, wheel brakes. I think I'm gonna use my wheel brakes. No, 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 no. Don't do it like this. Oh man, I'm gonna cry. No, I'm off the runway. No, 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 no. No, don't tell me I'm gonna crash. My first ever. Okay, I, I did an automatic taxi. <laughs> that was really bad. I'm so sorry for being such a noob. But at least I landed this thing. Well, I, I taxied right away. Whoa, there was some more caution again. Well, let's just stay here, I guess. And I'm gonna try to use that. Uh... Let's see, let's see, can I? Oh, yes, there we go. Let's see if the wings are uh, folding up. Probably not. Maybe it's because I have the master caution. Well, I don't know. Oh yes, now it's going up. <laughs> this is so freaking cool. Look at this. <laughs> wow. Wow. Have a look at the aircraft from outside. Come on. This is quite amazing. I wish I could move around, but I haven't actually learned the controls. 
on how I do that. Well, maybe I can use the mouse just to show you how the aircraft looks. Wow. This is so cool looking. And if I just try to jump back into the cockpit and I'm gonna put back the wings. There we go, and push it in. And then we're gonna go out again. <laughs> Look at the wings. It's so cool. Wow, I love this already. Digital Combat Simulator FA-18C Hornet. Guys, I have a next video coming up probably tomorrow or the day after tomorrow with a carrier takeoff and landing. I'm so excited about this. I hope you can enjoy it. Anyway, this module is about to get released later this month. You can already now pre-order it on the digitalcombatsimulator.com or on Steam. It costs $60 to pre-order it. And if you miss that, it's gonna get more expensive. So if you are into DCS, I really recommend you to pre-order this module now. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much to Belsentech and also to the team behind the Digital Combat Simulator for letting me try the preview version of this module. I really, really appreciate that. Guys, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button also. Please join my Patreon and support my channel and thank you so much to all my existing Patreons. I really, really appreciate your help. I'm probably and well I am back tomorrow again probably with another DCS FA-18C Hornet video. Take care for now, have a lovely Saturday and see you tomorrow again. Cheers!